Hello everyone, my name is Arya Vyas and welcome back to my channel Chess with Arya. If you enjoy, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Um, first again, I would like to thank everyone for all your support and encouragement because your comments are really motivating me to work more harder and towards my dreams. I hope everyone is staying home and staying safe. Once again, in today's class, it's going to be a sequel to the last lesson in which I am going to play a game on chess.com and once again show you on how you can apply the different tactics, the different strategies into the game. This is slightly, this might seem slightly repetitive but it is very important because even if you practice 50, 75 or 100 puzzles every day but if you don't perform it into the actual match then you will not be able to gain the benefit because it's important that what you learn you have to learn how to apply it also and that can only come through experience also it's very important to play matches because when you play different different matches you will get an experience to play with different types of people different types of openings different types of plays and strategies which will help you have a wider and vast idea of the game of chess because the game of chess is unlimited you no one can ever completely master the game but it's best that you have the maximum experience that you can achieve and so in today's lesson i'm going to use the chess website chess.com and um, show you on how you can apply the different tactics and strategies that i have shared in my previous lessons that you can check out on my YouTube channel that is once again Chess with Arya. I hope you like the video and please subscribe. So now let's move on to playing the game. Um, this time we're going to play a 10 minutes blitz match. Um, so we can get our brain to start move, working faster and be able to apply concepts at strike. But at the same time give ourselves some time and if there's any critical position then we can think about it. Um, e4, d5, e5, knight f6, Scandinavian, bishop to c4, knight takes d5, because we have just started to gain the pawn, queen takes d5, um, queen takes g2, and the pawn was left unprotected. Um, the most popular move is queen to f3, um, to stop us from capturing the pawn, I mean, capturing the rook on h1 and then now bishop to f5 trying to get our king to castle as soon as possible castle at the same time protecting the pawn and now we're just going to keep going for attacks we could try for okay um can we use the pin yes we can because knight, bishop over here if knight then there's actually a check but there's a double attack so does that work we can just capture it's okay. Um, because once you're like having a piece advantage or like a materialistic advantage, then it's okay to not go for a complete attack. But that doesn't mean we should play passive and not um and keep playing a very defensive game. We should do both attack at the same time be slightly defensive because now your opponent might be thinking even faster trying to get you to make a mistake and we're going to try and do a double attack so if the rook plays anywhere then maybe we should do f3 but if rook to f1 then okay we can try and play rook to f8 capture capture once again threatening the bishop move if he moves away, then we can play bishop on f3 and do a double attack on the knight and the rook. Um, the main advantage that we got over here was that white did not try to capture the center as soon as possible. And we do have it possible now. So double attack on the rook on h1 and the knight on d5. One more mistake that white made over here was that he left his pieces uncoordinated. Especially in like an end game where there's not queens and the pawns are not in your advantage, you should try to keep your pieces more coordinated and go for active attacks with more threats and with more tactics like double attacks or back rank checkmates or ladder mates. But instead, black, I mean, white try to use a kind of very passive way that is to try to bring your king into the center. 
that only works when there is not many pieces but in this case we actually have quite a few pieces so it's better that when you have a materialistic disadvantage towards the end game try and continue to attack and don't give up in the end game because if your opponent gets pressurized and make a mistake then it's your chance to go for it and be able to win the match so never give up especially in the end game because it's a very pressurizing environment and it's very easy to make a mistake in in the end game and now the we were able to capture the pawn white cannot capture it back because the rook on d8 is spinning the pawn and black did try to make our rook move away but what white didn't see was that bishop into f8 and they're not forced to capture it with the rook and now the pawn on d3 is unprotectable what white could do is exchange of pawns but this pawn is no longer unprotected so there's a check and white resigned especially in these type of games see that's why it plays off when you have a materialistic disadvantage or an advantage it's always important to keep going for threats and keep trying to attack your opponent because once you keep doing that this is actually a very psychological match like a game chess the game of chess is very psychological so even if the opponent is really strong has really good strategies knows the tactics but if even at one point in the match they don't think properly or they give up within themselves then they could lose to maybe a person who's very low rated against compared to them so never try to psychologically let yourself down and keep yourself composed and always keep looking for threats keep looking for mistakes that your opponent might have made so in this game what was the main mistake that black made according to me the one of the biggest mistake that white made was actually this opening against the scandinavian is slightly weak um i myself am a scandinavian player so i don't um usually prefer that white plays an opening like this because even i have played against the scandinavian and bishop c4 is not a very strong reply reply because we're giving up the pawn on g2 immediately which we saw over here and this was one of a very main mistake and this is the type of mistakes that affect someone psychologically during the match because when you lose a pawn in the first five moves you actually become kind of you know nervous yourself that oh i made a mistake i lost a pawn but if you give a solid opening then you are comfortable with the situation that you have you have a proper strategy you have threats you have plans and so you build up yourself you build up some self confidence and some self esteem when you play good openings so uh, once again play openings that suit your style if you are just a beginner i would recommend to play italian um from white side and four knights from black side um i'll try to explain those later on towards the sessions but um this is what i recommend but in this game this was one of the mistakes that white had made and another mistake that white made was that kind of passive gameplay this was a really good move knight on e5 but again when you have a materialistic disadvantage just try not to exchange your pieces try to keep more pieces on the board so you have more defenses and more chances of being able to attack your opponent so never um exchange too many pieces especially when you're in disadvantage but if you have a materialistic advantage try to exchange the pieces try to get as many pieces off of the board and now with we just played e5 to stop the bishop from attacking towards your king so we don't give the open any counter attack that is one more thing that we should keep in mind when you are in an advantage in advantage position is that always try to stop yourself or don't give your opponent a chance to do a counter attack because the opponent is now in kind of a tense atmosphere always searching for the mistakes that you made and they're more focused towards the game so don't allow your opponent to have any single counter attack or be able to get back the advantage that you have made um here see we didn't let them break into our center so we would be able to still maintain a strong front here um the biggest mistake one more was that 
um, why didn't the double attack that the bishop could have played on the rook on h1 and the knight and so here we were easily able to win a piece up and then the game was pretty easy what we tried to do was we tried to attack and then once you start pressurizing your opponent the opponent is in some ways kind of forced to give in but even if you are a queen down never resign never um give up because in the end there might be their chances of a stalemate their chances of perpetuals the chances of pictographic positions so there are many different ways that you could draw and even if your opponent makes some end game mistake you might even be able to promote and win the match so it doesn't matter what materialistic disadvantage positional disadvantage always don't give up never resign and only if you know that this position is going to lead to a draw for sure and if it's a theoretical end game only then should you ask for a draw don't even go for draws just go for a win that is what your main aim should be but more important than winning is also trying to have a proper game and never try to make some big mistake or just try to restrict the amount of mistakes that you made because eventually you will end up learning how to play a whole Now we are going to solve some puzzles again in the battle mode um, because so that if there are any new topics in the puzzles I can explain them at the same time um, you can also understand on how it's important to keep it really disciplined schedule and be able to solve at least 25 puzzles every day so that you can keep your brain active and keep yourself focused especially during quarantine because we're staying at home so much and we're not having many activities to keep ourselves busy it's important that we keep our mind focused and keep it running all the time so that we don't get in like issues or anything so now we're going to start with the battle puzzles so let's start um once again like last time we're going to be against an opponent three piece it starts off real easy backhand checkmate and then it keeps getting harder um the classic g7 mate hmm um this is almost like a ladder mate but it's like your the opponent's king already has few number of pieces this is smothers mate the one before was a smothers mate in which black's own pieces were actually stopping him from playing discovered attack um double attack ladder mate hmm a normal checkmate trying to restrict the opponent's pieces trying to stop them from moving a lot um double attack that was the wrong move push checkmate we got a piece um so checkmate especially when it's a checkmate it's all right if you sacrifice a piece um if you if you know for sure that it's going to become a checkmate if you don't then don't risk it but if you do know for sure then it's all right hmm um this is a double attack um the pawn was not allowed to capture a rook because it was um pinned this is a checkmate the classic queen on h7 rook f7 mate um 
Um, oh, this is a skewway. Back rank. And then... Huh. And this is actually deflection. And you would have captured the knight. Um, so yeah, what's important is that you try to make the least number of mistakes and try getting at least more than 10 puzzles right. And every time you have a target, try to achieve it. So this was for a battle rush. Um, one more thing that I would like to point out that could really help chess players and actually every person in the family especially during this crisis to actually calm themselves down and be able to control their emotions, control their feelings and stay focused um, is something known as brain yoga. Brain yoga is equal to as actual physical yoga but this actually helps our brain, both sides of our brain to function. Because chess is a game that requires activity not only from the right side of our brain but also the left side both at the same time because it has a very deep vast um, arena with many different possibilities and at every move there are almost 10 moves that you can play and so it's really important that you focus and are able to get yourself to think all the different variations and calculate as far as possible because as more and more you're going to increase your level what's going to happen is that you're going to have to start calculating more number of moves you're going to have to go from maybe two to three moves to maybe 10 to 15 moves with around three to four variations um, and what's helped me a lot is something known as brain yoga and brain yoga helps you to think from both sides so I'm going to show three exercises that I actually recommend everyone to do with me. So the first one is in which your right hand thumb points this way and your index finger or pointing finger points that way. And then what you do next is that this thumb starts, the left hand thumb starts pointing in the left direction and your pointing finger in the right hand points on that side. And then you keep switching it you see so what is actually hard in this is that you are controlling both of your hands at the same time and both of them are doing different actions and this is a very well recommended technique that a lot of not only chess players but many different respected and honorable people use so that they can calm their brain down and think more properly and be able to have more patience and time why does it need patience because this isn't something that just comes to you even if you're playing some instrument or especially chess for studies even for sports this really helps because you are trying you're controlling yourself you're being able to say okay you're commanding one hand to go that way and the other hand to do this at the same time now you're commanding the opposite vice versa so it's really important to apply brain yoga and be able to think about it in a complete manner. The next um, technique or exercise that I'm going to show you is once again pretty similar but slightly harder. So one of your hand is going to the piece victory sign and the other hand is going to be a thumbs up. And then you're going to clap and switch. So thumbs up in the right hand piece in the left hand clap thumbs up in the left hand piece in the right hand so it's going to look something like this so clap change clap change clap change clap change and one more thing is is that when i tried this out i realized that the more um, active my brain is the more easier it is for me so for example, if I do this during school hours, it's very easy for me because my brain is already activated. But if I suppose do it right early in the morning, 
it's a bit hard because my brain isn't still focused so what i'd like to say is instead of doing this when you're tired at the night before sleep don't do that instead the moment you wake up try doing it so that you can regenerate your brain and start focusing even um if you're supposed going to have exams then i would recommend that you do it before your exam maybe a couple of times go a bit faster and to improve your brain um you should try going faster so if the first time it takes you like some time you're a bit slow then you can try going faster so like clap change clap change clap change clap change clap change um and if you still feel that you can keep going faster then obviously you should go for it and keep trying to increase your level and the next one is a slightly harder one your right hand is going to rotate in the forward direction and your left hand is going to rotate in the backward direction so what i would recommend is that first you go with the right hand so 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 6 and once you have that in your head go the opposite direction so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 and i would recommend you do around 7 repetitions of all of these exercises so your brain starts working and i recommend that when i was doing them you were also follow so we could all do it together and that's my tips that i would like to share at the end of this video once again everyone stay home stay safe and i would like to thank everyone for your tremendous amount of support and your encouragement and all your comments have really helped me to achieve what i am also i would like to thank my coaches who have shared their knowledge and i would like everyone to remember is that what i'm saying in this video is, is something that i have gained through experience but if anyone feels that um you have a doubt or a question you can surely comment it on to my youtube channel which is chess with arya please like and subscribe because this will not only encourage me but at the same time you will be able to learn something new during this quarantine and you would be able to spend your time more effectively and productively thank you stay home stay safe